I think we need to kiss Linus Tech Tips goodbye in 2021 because in 2022, I'd like to introduce, throw out the suggestion, I'm calling it Linus Prawn Picks. And welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. And then that is Jordan. And that is Pedro, and that is you, Shadow Realm Dynamic. Mm. Joining us live, helping us for him. Do we even have the buttons lined up this week? Cocaine. Okay, okay, no, <laughs> no matter how many times you wish upon the wishing base, <laughs> it's not going to turn into an ASCII penis. No. One day. One day it will, and I'll, I'll show all of you, damn it. I want to believe. What's going on? We got a chunky show, and yes, right out of the gate, I want to uh, talk about a little something. Well, I guess oh. first I get an admission to make. I, I you got admit. another confession to make? Yeah, I do. Oh, did you see the Dave Grohl thing? Yeah, yeah. With the uh, fun. Uh, Lisa Loeb? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That yeah, the, 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 the death say, metal cover. Yeah. It was like, yeah. Because I was like, what is this? And I start walking off and I see Dave Grohl like in a, like a onesie direct. I'm like, all right, the fuck's this? We, we got to go inspect. I'm like, all right, well done. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but yeah, uh, earlier this week, I... Uh, I might have bought another PCS yeah. Oh no. Huh? You sound you sound like my girlfriend. I uh, Jordan, I bought another plant. <laughs> my, my, I thought I was the one who had problems with buying things. Uh, uh, yeah. Really, yeah, really. I, I, my, my <laughs> um, yeah. In my defense. Such a tiny defense. What I did buy was um cables that were attached to it or that came with it because ah. another thing I'm trying to get, I found out that they're pin compatible and I didn't feel like doing like homebrew. Like this is how you wire ethernet into, uh, it was like $200 worth of cables included with the card for 40 bucks. Okay. Well that's, that's not too bad. That's yeah. like, yeah, it's like my grandfather buying a new razor every time to just get like the free cartridge that comes with it, comes with it. Cause right. it's a lot cheaper. Right. Yeah. Then another thing happened. Another thing happened today, and that was a Linus Tech Tips video was released. Yes. Now, if you want the full, <laughs> if you want the full story, I encourage you, if you're a patron, go back and watch the pre-pre or listen to the pre-pre super shows, and we go way in depth on this. But was it's I the only person? The only person. If you're unfamiliar, they're doing the. We're going to use Linux as a regular windows user challenge. I watched the whole video, but I would not say anything negative to anyone who was genuinely screaming at a monitor or a display <laughs> at the beginning when they were doing one thing that just, they were trying to install a font under Linux. That's hard, man. Yeah. Okay. The GUI barely works. You think fonts do? Here's something that has had me chuckling since I've gotten to the house. Um, so th- this is really good. Uh, our own resident, um, Matthew Commandon. He, he, we know, we, we joined in in Discord. We, we were talking. <laughs> yes. Th- this is like point to point. It starts off with a very long time because we were discussing where fonts were used to be located in the old time, followed by, wait a minute, <laughs> is this a video about installing a goddamn font? <laughs> Yes, yes, it was. Well, at least, at least half a at video. A portion of it, yes. fun. Yes, <laughs> I, that that just made me that continue. Just like watching that, and you know, there was probably about three minutes between those posts and the next one. I'm like what? Like I know those feels. <sighs> yeah. What did you think? I mean, was there like what was going on? Like I, I was like, just double click on the thing, man, and it says and stuff. I, listen, I, I'm I'm just very proud of our boy. He managed to do a thing without installing uninstalling GNOME. <laughs> Fair progress, progress. mostly yeah. because GNOME is already in not installed. <laughs> I think everyone had a good experience with like getting a printer set up. That was a thing. Yeah. Yes. Oh, pr- print printers last longer on Linux because they don't have the phone home thing to like lie about their ink levels. That's that's the other oh, nice thing about the yep. uh, cups drivers. And uh, the the one thing that uh, Linus failed was digitally signing the uh, a PDF thing, which okay, fair enough. Uh, 
you, that's not something most uh, common users would do. So a lot of people had problems with that. You know, in, in everyone's out, defense like, what on kind that, of, yeah, I was like, ooh, I'd have to figure that out. <laughs> what so, kind uh, of user are you especially t- trying to target here? <laughs> so so here, here here's the thing, though. Having recently gone through purchasing a house, there is a lot of forms that they want you to sign via PDF. Because they don't want you to, especially these days, because they don't want to do like physical delivery because of COVID, right? And a lot of these legal firms will give you the Adobe DRM laden PDF that like, good yes. luck getting any of those features running under Linux. Like you're fucked. Mm. But that's Adobe, that's Adobe's fault. That's not Linux. That's Yeah, no, that's straight yeah. up Adobe's fault. And um, kudos to Luke for actually teaching me about that particular application, which, yes, it is. Uh, they do have a commercial version, but you can also use it for free to sign the one document and they're done. Uh, the other thing that kind of jumped out at me was Luke claimed that he installed uh, OBS Studio via the PPA because he's u- using what Linux PPA? Mint. Linux, the PPA. A PPA. A PPA. A PPA. The PPA for OBS, the one that's on the OBS Studio website. Okay. Yes. We're just clarifying, (laughs) man. I'm saving you some trouble down the road here. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) But yeah, no, Linux Mint is based on uh, Ubuntu LTS. So I have one of the the netbooks is running um, Shubuntu uh, 20.04. And I installed that same PPA and I installed um, OBS Studio and it did have the browser. source which his apparently didn't so he had to go by other means to get a version of obs installed with the browser source i had a similar problem a couple months ago and i found out that is because i had a leftover file in etcld.so that was pointing at the wrong directory for obs to link at oh i remember that yeah yeah and and that's why it wasn't getting picked up that was the first thing that popped into my mind but if they're just like but i i compiled my obs for one so i don't know why they're running yeah they they didn't do that they didn't have obs installed beforehand either so yeah so that was weird I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I think it reinforced for the most part, like that if you're going to be using regular desktop stuff under Linux, it's there. Like maybe you need to learn the new menu to look under, but other than that, it's pretty straightforward, which has been the case for like a decade now. Well, what do you think so, about um, like all of KDE just being a dumpster fire? According to, uh, I mean, I mean, I, I, I don't disagree. <laughs> okay. Here's a fair one. We were talking about this, but I'll go ahead and give it the creating a shortcut. I think across the board, everyone <laughs> yes. went, huh? I, wait, I guess that's possible. I wonder how that's, I, I was curious. I was like, wow, I, I, like, like challenge pissing. Maybe I would never do that, but I guess there's gotta be. A- I haven't created a shortcut in a long, long time. It's uh, I usually, if I want a desktop shortcut, I drag it from the menu to the desktops. Like if, there, if that, I want a desktop a shortcut, shortcut I'll, I'll go to Steam and be like, add desktop shortcut so I can get the Steam. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> links manage well, add desktop never. shortcut. <laughs> yeah, right. Like, that, that, that's where I'm at at this point. Like, but yeah, the, the symbolic link versus like the dot desktop file. What, whatever. That's mm-hmm. that's trivial stuff. But I, I buried the lead before we get into the steamy stuff because we've had the Linux desktop challenge from Linus Tech Tips. The best thing from the entire video. The one, the thing that caught my eye the most was not installing fonts. It wasn't setting up a printer. It wasn't any other nonsense. Cause I think we need to kiss Linus tech tips goodbye in 2021, because in 2022, I'd like to introduce throughout the suggestion. I'm calling it Linus prawn picks because I'm really curious <laughs> as to what was blurred in that URL bar in the browser. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh yeah. What, what, what kind of questionable histories are out there? Uh, there, there was questionable enough to <laughs> block that out. You, you don't get passwords and usernames or anything like that in a uh, URL suggestion no, box. No, you, 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 you might get like an already open tab for like his court, his divorce proceedings or something. I don't know, man. Like, <laughs> <laughs> or like internal um, stuff for his company that has a token in the URL could be yeah. Yeah. or or there, there's like www.totallyillegalcaymanaccount.com or whatever <laughs> you see, you online see, banking these are all great mental exercises what I'm probably like oh no one needs to know i go for that so maybe yeah. Linux gamecast was on there that'd be funny um <laughs> oh, man. what wouldn't adjust i thought that was uh that that just i i do a lot of content production and i've had to like i've been saved 
like, whoa, all right, that shouldn't be in a video. Let's go back and uh, make sure that doesn't show up. So there you go. That's it. Um, that's our Linus uh, font installing review. Linus Linux update <laughs> of the week. <laughs> but the horse will never accept this fonty future. No, the the horse is a font that is fully uninstallable, and if you try to put it in your Word document, you will die. It's the Steam Linux update of the week. Time to shove some crappy and, eyeballs. Uh, yes, <laughs> yeah, someone's doing something with our eyeballs, and I'm not entirely sure I approve of it. But uh, Battle Eye, that well, it got Proton support a while back, and the. The way that you enable uh, Battle Eye support for your game is you email the Battle Eye people and say, please give, and they give. That That's it. That that That's all you need to do. So uh, apparently quite a few people did. Uh, we already knew about Mountain Blade 2, Battle Lord, and Ark Survival Evolved. And according to Valve, there is now four more games. Arma 3, Daisy, which are basically the same game, uh, Unturned, and Planet Side 2. And so, with Unturned, I'm like, wait a second, hold on. That game has a Linux version. I know I played it on Linux and I know it's native. Oh, you need to use Proton to join the BattleEye protected servers because you don't have a native version for BattleEye. Right. I, okay. I, I, had, I had a similar <laughs> thought with, uh, what, what was Arc. it? Uh, not not Arc, uh, De- uh, Arma 3, because like virtual programming came out a while ago and they're like, yeah, we're working on porting Arma 3 to Linux with our state-of-the-art Eon tech. And apparently that fell through and now they're just like, yeah, guys, can you please just play it in Proton? Thank you. Um, I, I, so I, so I, I looked into Arc because I'm like, okay, like what, what what is the actual difference here if you're running this on uh, like the native version versus running Proton? Right. And based on, based on a couple forum posts I found, um, it... You can't you can't run it as, as on as high as settings in Proton, but it is more consistently like less choppy. So people seem to be doing that, and you know, given given the state of neglect that a lot of these older Linux ports are getting, especially for Unity games, this is going to be needed needed even if the native version does support their AC solution. Oh yeah, one hundred percent. I mean, that's something mm-hmm. people gloss over a lot. Like when it comes to game preservation, it is going to be something Proton related. You know, in twenty years, like how are you going to be playing these games? Um. I looked at the list, you know, Mountain Blade 2, Arc, Arma 3, DayZ, Unturned, Planet Side 2. Was anything of value gained? Okay, here, both of you. Did mm-hmm. either of you start searching through your uh, Steam library? Like, do I own any of these games? I own Arc. <laughs> I own I Unturned it, I, and Arc. <laughs> I bought it. I bought it because I wanted to make a video on it a couple of years ago, back mm-hmm. when it like went on sale for cheap, and it ran like such shit that I couldn't even. Aww. So... <laughs> I, I didn't have anything. Uh, something that I'm I'm kind of interested in because I I haven't seen it in a while. But when Day Z was the hotness that kept mm-hmm. on popping up on my tweet deck feed, and you know Linux gaming, it was the I would tote switch to Linux, but and that blank was being filled in with like Daisy. And uh, now that that's changed, but you know it's kind of fallen out of favor. I I always look forward to what the you know new excuse is like preloaded in the chamber. I'm like, uh, uh no, nope, this. So here's here's, here's <laughs> my uh, the- here's my advice. Here's my advice because we we know you know we we want to like really make it clear that we'd run Linux and we'd run Linux on every even though all we have is a Windows system. But you need to switch that over to like some more obscure software. You got to get off the gaming thing. No one's going to buy it anymore. So you got to, you got to up your game kids. <laughs> yeah. It's the El- Elgato uh, light control, man. I really, I really need it. The big thing. You know what? The, I got to get, I got to give the kid the credit though, man, because Lightus was spinning his wheels. Looks like I just installed the app. I'm like that's my boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, the, the big thing about battle. Eye is, the big game that uses Battle Eye, you know, the most widely played game with Loaded the gun highest to my head. current I could number of you. players. Nope. Drum roll, please. PUBG. It's PUBG. Is it still around? <laughs> yeah. It's still number one on Steam. <laughs> well, I guess, I guess if you can't play Fortnite on Steam, you got to do the next best thing, right? Right. Yeah. I, I, Fortnite but, is not on Steam. But don't you hate but it? You, you, Go ahead. Uh, you're, you're, was, you're, was, we're uh, trying to throw it to the same thing. Let's see if you do. Yeah, better yeah, yeah. I was, yeah, I was, yeah. was, was going to say like, well, may, may, maybe if uh, that favorite game you want to play is a Ubisoft game, it might be a little better in the near future. Allegedly, 
So we saw a little bit of movement on SteamDB. Uh, they've updated the Ubisoft Connect, whatever app. You know it, you love it, you hate it, especially if you've been dealing with Proton. It's that thing that pops up because you need that to click play again sometimes, but usually it just launches. But, you know, it's that thing you open, then you go into the settings and you disable the overlay and all the other nonsense that pops up. So you can That's play you an play. Assassin's Creed. That's you play. That's their client thingy. Their, it was their answer to Steam. I, I, I mean, it, it, uh, it's part and parcel of Lupe. Well, Lupe. I've, I've, Lupe. I've got experience because Ubisoft has got all the same nonsense because I fought this thing. Yes. Because the one that pops up, <laughs> the one that pops up now is like, it's in and out. You can't purchase anything through it, which irritated me because I wanted to try out Trackmania as a service. So I'm kind of excited about this. I am. Um, do you think this is deck related? Do you think something's going on? This is all speculation. Let's go ahead and point this out. Uh, what, what, what are we talking about? Hmm? We, do we show the Steam the, the Ubisoft the Connect? We're talking about uh, Ubisoft Connect. Yeah. It's their Steamworks the equivalent. Thing. It's basically the SteamDB thing. The, yeah. the, it's their Steamworks uh, in the sense that uh, you have everything that's networked goes through Ubisoft Connect. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, say, the, the, your the, online the, games, your account. Cr- uh, the yeah. uh, cross-platform <laughs> save, like, via Switch or yeah, PC or it, Xbox. It's is, the yeah. shim yes. loader, the wholly yeah. unnecessary because they're like, fuck it, we're Ubisoft yep. loader. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, but yeah, no, I, I, th- I think, a, I think a lot of that is a lot of the movement we're going to be see from seeing from like other AAA studios, especially on Steam, is going to be deck related, right? Like if they can get their games um, playable on, on another system, platform, yes, yeah, <laughs> then that's more sales going to them, right? Like, why wouldn't they? I don't know, but I mean, you would have to think because maybe they want. See, what I want to live in this world where they're going to just have because I, I talked about this a while back if they could just have like uh, a proton installer for the ubisoft like launcher which i understand i think pedro made the point i'm like yeah so then you can just straight buy games from another platform with inside and i'm like all right i understand <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i get it but can't have that <laughs> again it is well maybe, maybe i've heard other speculation of like maybe they're going to be setting up for a new rainbow six game they were making some updates i don't know i the what really had me curious about this scratching was like Epic, like Ubisoft, when was it back in 2019? They're like, hey man, mm-hmm. we're not going to be releasing anything on uh, Steam. We're just going to make sure we release everything on Epic because probably some money exchanged hands. Maybe that's just kind of died yeah, out a little bit. I, I went back and checked and like Ubisoft games are still getting updates. But yeah, the, la- the last one that, the last big one that was released on Steam, there's still a couple indies that have, uh, that were just published by Ubisoft mm-hmm. that are on Steam from mm-hmm. like 2020, 2021. But yeah, for the most part, all the big games seem to yeah, have Assassin's the Epic Store. Creed, the one I, see, yeah. here, here's, here's the thing. I never bought an Assassin's Creed game from Ubisoft. It was given to me from my motherboard that I bought. And now I, I, I hell, I fucking use Lutris to play it. So right. shit. <laughs> but. Maybe they got to change something because, you know, we're talking about a Steam Deck. Maybe a Steam Deck just is not there to run that secondary, doesn't have the horsepower to get the Steam going. Then, like the Ubisoft thing that pops up, then when the game starts launching. Maybe not. Yeah. I don't know. I, I don't All know. speculation. The- the, the whole point of the connect thing is to like provide this consistent ecosystem for Ubisoft games. So maybe just like having it updated for deck, just have that, has that base covered for or the existing just have a they separate have package. There. Okay, yeah, let, me, let me see if I can put package. a p- fine enough point on this. Because when you do the Ubisoft thing, it pops up the Ubisoft client. Yeah, that's uh, you play. play. Yes, that's Ooh, what play. I said earlier. Yeah, <laughs> That's not going to be allowed on deck. No, because that's a launcher. Yeah. Yes. So, I mean, it's going to be allowed in as much uh, as uh, well, you're not everything gonna get a else will be Well, you green check mark for your game. Yeah, you don't get the... Oh, no. Big, okay, this game is great. <laughs> so, do you think this could be a play to have something seamless? Yeah, probably. Maybe. Who knows? It, it, Maybe. it definitely seems like up there... It seems like something that, like, the Ubisoft Connect project, mm-hmm. uh, whatever you call it, that, that's sort of what their end goal is. So, it makes, it makes sense that that's what they would do on the Steam Deck. Who knows? We'll, know, we'll but, see when they get released in February. Well, I am curious. What do you mean by Uplay is no longer a thing? 
Yeah, yeah. The, the, it's still well. You play is no longer a thing in the way that like games for Windows Live is now just like Xbox Live Arcade or whatever. Uh-huh. It's it's now it's they renamed it. It's how Facebook is not Facebook anymore. It's Meta. So it's, it's like just, the Ubisoft Connect thing. Yep, that, yeah. that's the same shit. It's all the same shit. <laughs> Thanks for clarifying. Okay. Patreon. <laughs> Fair enough. I'll eat crow on that one. Well, I <laughs> from, mean, from, from I, the end user's perspective, it does. It's like they changed the name of a building, oh and you still refer to it by the old name. Like, <laughs> listen, if somebody wants some runway. I'm going to lay it out for him. Um, <laughs> let's talk about some deck facts because that was another thing uh, they did. The brilliant idea of trying to self-host all their videos, and that was a dumpster fire for the first hour. But they finally switched over to YouTube, and uh, we were able to learn about some things going on with the steam deck, but they finally compiled everything, including nice texty bits. Steamworks documentation. Now, a couple of fun things in here. Uh, You know, they come out very strongly and say, Hey, use Vulcan as your primary graphics API because not just for performance, but for battery life. I thought that was interesting. Now uh, they also make a note. Hey, Nuke all of your launchers from orbit because fuck launchers. They didn't say it like that, but that's what they meant. That was, it's the spirit. Also, this was interesting. Don't use DRM because DRM's bad. Okay. This is from Valve. Like, all right. Okay. That's not, yeah, it's going to mess up with the, with the proton. Right. Uh, they, they, they've, they've also uh, recommended that a, you uh, put in a frame cap for uh, better battery life. Uh, and the one weird thing I saw was like, if you're looking, if they're looking for like a substitute controller, they recommend using a DualShock 4 DualSense 5 controller for working out the controller mappings. Cause it's like what hardware wise. It doesn't mo- have to be. It can be any color you like, baby. Are you sure? Um, it has to be yep. Gabon colored. It has, it has to be the flesh Green. colored. Yeah, the the, 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 the pasty Gabon nipple colored. No, uh, but yeah, you, I, I find that weird. I guess hardware wise, that's some, most similar to the uh, to the thing controller that's going to be imp- integrated on the deck. But your glyphs are going to be all messed up, and you're going to have to do that translation of like X. Do I mean the Xbox X or the PlayStation X? Ah. Um, yeah, everything that they're pushing here seems to be very much for the sake of battery life. No DRM. You don't have something like Denuvo that's constantly calling home. Where's my battery going? Oh, that's right. Denuvo ate it. Uh, and the limiting of the FURPS, because not only does it uh, save you the battery life because your GPU isn't pegged at 100%, uh, as a liker of laptops, I can confirm that it also brings down the noise level from the cooling fan. Yes. I got I got to say. <laughs> I got to say I like big dumb lists that enumerate shit like this because now we have a sign we can tap. We can be like don't make yes. me tap the sign. This is the thing. <laughs> now, I thought this was very interesting cuz I, I just read through the entire thing. Um there's a couple of things, you know, it does naturally walk you through everything that you need for your little checklist mm-hmm. to send it off to be submitted to show up on the decks. Uh Launcher screen, you know, the version of deck Steam for the deck. They do make a thing because there's a QA thing in there. It's like, can you prevent your game from showing up on the deck store? Eh, no, you can't. That mm. that mechanism's not there. Like, hey, man, mm. uh, if they're using the Steam deck, don't list our game. I was like, get <laughs> wrecked. He- Oh, oh, I, 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 I have, I have the big brain workaround for that though. Is you just put a bunch of titties in the game, and then by default they get filtered out of search results. So we're just gonna see a lot of non-deck optimized games all of a sudden get some titties randomly. Like, don't play it on the. Deck. This is an interesting. If, if you read into this a little bit, I mean, this has got a little, just a little bit of a shots fired. Like, you better get your shit together because people are going to be sending the developers, like, like, hey. Why does this game run like poo on my new Steam Deck? They're not going to be asking Valve. Maybe that's a feature they might consider adding, just to be honest. <laughs> just a, 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 a contact the developer button? No, no. Bring, I mean, brings up Thunderbird. For, for developers, they're like, yo, can I just not be listed if device detect tech? Yeah. They just don't want to deal with I, it. I mean, that, I, I mean, that I would mean, be the, the, kind. Well, I mean, like there, there are some games that are just not well suited to the form factor, right? And, but I, I guess the the other idea here is like, yeah, you can plug it into a dock and use it as a computer. So you better make sure that shit will run on it because people might be using well, I mean, it. Like that. There's games that are just going to eat um, nonstop shit, yes. trying to make it run. Cyberpunk. <laughs> oh, I look forward <laughs> anything to that, that doesn't have a low end mode. 
that is not properly optimized. What? I think I, I think <laughs> I think the closest thing uh, chance we have to actually achieve fusion is to try and have the Steam Deck run Cyberpunk. We are all going to sit, we're just going to be laughing. We're going to be sitting around the house playing some Just Cause Three <laughs> multiplayer. Yeah, it'll it'll work. I swear. <laughs> we, we we might need to use remote play, and that's where uh, Vappy's gonna come in, <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, there's there's a new Steam client beta update for December second, uh, and if you look under remote play, we see the one Linux related note: greatly improved Vappy hardware decoding on Linux. Now, is this related to the patch we're going to be talking about in the news segment? Spoilers. Shrug. But, you know, they're they are really trying to get all this remote play stuff on deck sorted so that it will be minimally dog shit as possible. One thing that popped into my head this week was like the or, the the switch was like in the, in the commercials for it. They're like showing people with multiple switches, like sitting in the same physical location playing games. You could maybe actually pull that off with a bunch of people uh, in like a relatively short local area network with decks where like if you just connect to one guy's remote play, you could reasonably have a multiplayer experience for games that don't natively support it. No, and son, I want, no, we, they need to get, take it all the way back. I want it to like Game Boy. I want something that yeah, looks the, the suspiciously cable. like a fucking Firewire cable, but it's not because we use a different <laughs> pin out because fuck you or Nintendo. <laughs> it's Ethernet over type C. That's, that's where we're at right now. I want RS-232 ports I mean, you could just get, yeah, just about. get a type C hub. Everyone connects their thing to the type C hub and away you go. <laughs> no, the, um, the claims about the new and improved VA API. Okay. Is it improved to match what Linux already has? Or are we talking like Valve paying Lunar no. G to improve uh, VA API like they did in the past and they it's actually just, have something that's better? It just means it's going to look like true, but faster. I mean, that's, that's, <laughs> that's what FSR is for. They got to they gotta fix it up. VK base salt that shit. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. This is going to be the, very, the, very helpful on... The Chromebook. They need that. <gasps> the, the, that oh. FSR is going to actually make a big, big difference because if, you, if you're rendering your game at like 850 by 540, it's still 69, but there you go. It, like your Chromebook. Uh, it's a much lower resolution and you can play that AAA game in the 720p-ish screen that the Game Gear so, has. On your Chromebook? On, on the on the Chromebook, on Chromebook. yeah. <laughs> so this is from uh, AndroidPolice.com. Links to all this stuff is in our show notes. You should go click on them. LinuxTeamCast.com. Don't read them. Just click. click. Just click. <laughs> don't 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 pay attention to what the text of the link says. We're not <laughs> redirecting you to sketchy Russian sites. No, but we are re- redirecting you to Android Police, where they're talking about um, they're talking about Borealis, the uh, rumored long rumored Steam client for Chromebooks. And it's totally happening, you guys. We swear, according to the, these rumors, it's going to get a soft launch by Q2 or Q3 2022, maybe sort of according to the rumor bill. Uh, but the article goes on to talk about um, how likely they're going to be using Proton on Chromebooks to uh, improve game compatibility. And I mean, <laughs> it's a good thing, I guess. It expands the coverage that Proton has. Hopefully that will cause bugs to get fixed and on lower end systems, you'll be able to play or not lower and non Chromebook systems, you'll be able to play games. But like, I ke- I'm convinced until we start seeing some beefier Chromebooks out there, I have to assume this is more like game streaming oriented. The uh, we have Stadia at home approach. Oh, you shut up, man. I just can't wait to play some AAA <laughs> titles and just crush them on my four gigabyte, one gigahertz celery uh, Chromebook. I got. Hey, I, I, that's pretty I, much I, the specs on this thing. <laughs> you hear it man. this time next I feel year. Personally targeted. You, you can play some Cybertruck on it. Ah, <laughs> uh, you know, I'm gonna try. I, I am because if it comes out, I do have a Chromebook. I'm gonna try it, and I'm gonna try Proton, and I'm going to, if I have to, I'll pull an SSD out of the drawer with a USB adapter and just run it off of that. Uh, but I'm gonna try. I'm genuinely going to try because with the current um, implementation that, that they have, drop it, it itself, drop it. Come, come on, <laughs> it's fairly you're, 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 whip, you're whipping it around. I'm just yeah, like, the, the, the entire audience is all watching it for the same purpose. They're like, "Come on, <laughs> go!" But, but I believe no, uh, I the, <laughs> the current implementation that they have with um, Christini, uh, which is the containerized containerized uh, Linux uh, application running ability. It already runs Steam and you can already start 
quite a few deal of uh, games, at least native ones. I didn't actually try Proton, but you can start them. The performance is poop. Listen, man, if but I can, can start it, them. I can do it on a Chromebook. Here's my plan. Maybe it's going to be it end up shipping something like a Steam Deck interface. We could buy some Nintendo controllers and get some tape. Done. Well, <laughs> It'll be awesome. It's worth, it's, it's, it's worth a shot. We need to do it for science. Now, I know this is like the starving time for games. Not a, not a bunch of new releases, but we got some new games and we got a couple updates for you this week. We do. And uh, the first one, uh, new game that I don't think we talked about this one specifically, but we've covered quite a few of the drone games uh, in the past. This one is about micro drones and it is Ooh, currently UE4. in early access. Yes. The, the, you that, can tell that, it's that UE4, UE4 by the, the by the tech demo the they bloom. plagiarized. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that, that is the, the house from like that early Vulcan those demo. Textures. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it is an early access uh, over here. It'll cost you eleven pounds thirty nine, and it the people who have purchased it have had only positive things to say. So it's like a hundred percent of the twenty user reviews. That's a bit odd but uh the the thing that got me was the td tiny little overcraft that seems to be a little too small to bear any kind of eels no eels so overcraft and valor <laughs> no eels please for fondle that my buttocks <laughs> would you like to come back to my place bouncy bouncy i mean okay listen outside of the eelless hovercrafts uh i mean it's drone racing but it's got pvp however that's supposed to play out and um I don't know. It's what? probably just racing against yeah. online people. Recommended to be played with it. What? Recommended to be played with an RC transmitter? What? Huh? Yes, you can use the RC uh, controllers as USB one. Oh, Some right. Hang on. Yeah, I got that. I got that. Yeah, let me just go to the other side of the room where that non-existent thing, I don't even know what the hell it is, is recommended. <laughs> to- <laughs> if you're a drone aficionado, chances are you have one already. Don't you <laughs> think, like, isn't that the type of person that only does one thing? That's what they're going for? Like, maybe broaden the appeal here. Maybe don't have it dialed in to expect me to have an RC control when I'm playing a Maybe it's windy out. Maybe it's raining out. Well, maybe l- l- people listen. just want to sit at home and not actually my bring. Point. You're, you're very just, ex- my point being, these are not the people I want to buy the game and race against. I want to race against You are a noise. filthy drone casual, <laughs> casual and you deserve to have your ass kicked. All right. <laughs> and that's only going to run you $14.99. Yes. <laughs> uh, it's not... It, it's a drone game, but sticking with what, the what RC thing. put some wheels thing, on my drones? Yeah. Yes, <laughs> effectively. Or, you know, you take the wheels the, the out of your drones. RC car and you turn it into a drone. That that seems to have been the progression can, that happened there. Can but I yes, turn my cat RC into cars. a drone? You can, but you can only do it once. You could try. <laughs> Someone's already successfully done it. It, it fly. It, it, it used to fly a little wobbly, but uh, yes, this is not about drones. This is about the cars. It's pocket cars, and they have a new map and chat in online mode. <laughs> Come I'm on. Really proud of that. Yeah, man. <laughs> I really want to like this game. I do. I want this game to have something. I, I was a big fan of um, dare you RC Sim the back in the day. Ocean Shader. Yes, <laughs> because the new map is the island map, and you have, like, sand, wet sand, tall grass. Uh, it, it, it's effectively like a little tropical island that has three uh, racetracks, three new racetracks. Or you can do the practice track, which is just free roam, uh, that teeny tiny little thing. But, uh, yeah, I, I really like RC car games. I like um, Revolt, and... I want this to be 2021 Revolt or 21st Century Revolt with better graphics because the physics are spot on. You can go as easy on the assists or as hard, like completely hands off. And you have to get a grip on how the cars control to actually keep them going in a straight line. And I love that. I do. But there's not enough content i've already finished all of the single player things i there's no one playing it online that that's the yeah, big one is. too so 
Yes, <laughs> when it's us. That playing. doesn't count. We're not people. <laughs> so at the end of the day, man, we got We're Linux maps. users. They still haven't <laughs> added any bots to this. And I mean, this is drive around, explode the, you know, it's Mario Kart, but with more um, RC cars. Uh, here's the thing. Mm-hmm. Here's the thing. This has been in development. Uh, this was released on uh, 2020. It's been a while. The updates are slow, few and far in between, and it's fourteen ninety nine Now, in order to make a game like this remotely work, you're going to have to build that community. You are. And one way to do it, we've seen multiple developers do it over the years. You need to put this thing on fire sale for a month to get that initial seed in there. Because as Pedro said, no one is playing it online. Me and Pedro. Maybe, maybe start a tournament. <laughs> well, get the people there first. Get the interest. Yeah. And like I say, yeah. make it a buck ninety nine. Something like make it ninety nine cents. But do it for a month. Get the initial base there. Then that's going to roll out because fourteen ninety nine for a forever alone racing mode, just not going to happen. No, I say that's somebody th- who that's owns the, thing. the game. <laughs> Revolt uh, for as old as that game is, as gone as the servers are, and as complicated as the ownership rights of that particular IP have become. Goddamn stupid fly. The um game still has an active community of online people so if you download rv house yeah and if rv you're not, house and there's like 20 or 30 people in there at any one point interesting facts about the other game but <laughs> bots bots pedro and i were talking about that here's the reason we don't st- you added the windowed mode good on you they do listen but <laughs> we need the bots because if it's just me and pedro we're not going to entice anybody else to come join us when it's just me and pedro in an empty ass map Mm-hmm. And me and Pedro need other people to race against. Yes. Yes. Or it's just very, might as well just play it by ourselves independently. Yeah. <laughs> so it's kind of difficult to make a fun stream. Do you have any thoughts on this, Jordan? I know you don't. Like, I, I mean, like, these all, these all seem like completely valid complaints for a game that doesn't have a very active player base. You've got to provide something, right? Otherwise, people just aren't going to play the game. How about, uh, oh man, it's, uh, the developer contacted us about this. Yeah, they did. Uh, and lo and behold, Rob Riches, uh, it's a Sokoban game, bo- box pushing. It's similar to, what was the name of that game we were playing a couple weeks ago where you have to like move one step at a time? Um, Dark Crypt. Spacing. Dark Crypt. Yeah, it's 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 a little Dark Crypt-ish in that you're, you're trying to like get through the level while, uh, moving in a very specific pattern to not get murdered. Uh, but, you know, so- Sokoban games are relatively popular. This one has a Linux port now. Uh, they tested on Ubuntu and Manjaro. Ooh, Ooh very fancy. fancy. Ooh. Yeah, <laughs> look, looks like that uh, FAQ is uh, paying dividends. People are like, oh, maybe we should test it on this thing that should that's going to be running the Steam Deck that's going to get released at some point, maybe if supply chain holds up. But yeah, uh, if you like block block pushing puzzles, you want another one? This one's reasonably priced. It's about seven, eight bucks Canadian. So what? Five bucks US ish? Four ninety nine ish? Survey says six ninety nine. Six ninety nine. All right, okay. it's still pretty, <laughs> still pretty reasonable. And you know, puzzle game, right? Like it'll reinforce how stupid you really are. So unless it's painfully easy, we don't know. We haven't, we haven't. What do you uh, like about uh, what's what's the best about puzzles? Ones that uh, gradually get up to the fuck you curve, or the ones that just like Steven Sausage roll it out of the gate and let you know what you're in for. Yeah, just like, oh, you think, like, here's the simple answer. It's the wrong answer. Always. <laughs> <laughs> now figure out why it's wrong and do it right next time. I, I Again, I really like Baba. The way that Baba did the puzzles. Because it comes in waves. It's like, oh, that's how that... Oh, that, that's how that works. B- oh. Baba. Oh. Te- technically, there's a progression in Steven Sausage Roll, but it's all just like so precise movement stuff that like it, there there isn't really one. Baba Baba has like the steady the the slope up before it's just like whoop. Have fun, Bucko. Figure it out. <laughs> all right, Baba was uh, good. <laughs> indeed, um, indeed. I think it's gonna do it for us. Uh, yeah. Bits. Coming up next. Oh my god, I really hope Santa's going to bring me a 2060. No, not the super, not the old 2060. Fuck it, we put 24 on it. No, no kung fu. I'm I'm still fighting that 
damn fly that Flighting. keeps uh, going around. Uh, the yes, He's confused the news are, your new desk. <laughs> the news are coming up, but don't you worry. We uh, take this little time to What's thank that you, on everyone the bag watching. Back it looks like a slice of pizza. Uh, hanging on that bag. Yeah, the bag back. Yeah. Or, or, like, or like a, a piece lion. of toast with some it's gym. A, it's a little plushy lion. That's Nori's backpack. It's got a little plushy lion. What's it taste like? I have Does no it idea. Like I never pizza? put it in my mouth. No, it. <laughs> do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. He's thinking about it. Do uh, it. Do it. Pedro, <laughs> everything's a choking hazard if you're brave enough. <laughs> if, oh, if I'm you, sure if you relax, I just want to put it in my mouth. <laughs> Man, there's there's an old Canadian children's commercial about like not putting stuff in your mouth. I, no, you, I, I, I can just imagine like Nori walking out while Pedro's dead yes. on the floor with that shoved in his mouth and just like hands on hips, just <laughs> Oh that Pedro. Ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba. Well, if you wanna if you wanna help fund the pilot for that show, uh, you can head on over to patreon.com slash next Become a Patreon. You get some cool stuff like access to our Discord channel. You get early show note access if you're part of the Death Mo Note tier. Uh, you can get access to uncut VODs three days early, RSVP for game streams. You can even buy your way into the goddamn show. Um, you can also get access to our Discord by subbing to us, uh, or yeah, following us on, uh, Sub. no, subbing to us yes. on Twitch. Uh, Twitch.tv slash Linux Gamecast. Go do that stuff. Yeah, you can listen to the pre-pre super shows and where we review in depth the challenges of font management and under Linux. Font management, man. Not even the, tri <laughs> the, the trials and tribulations. It's always fun uh, when okay. somebody pops into the Discord. I was talking about that on Wednesday. Uh, it's always fun to see somebody hopping in for the first time and going, oh, shit, my people. Yeah, people are yeah. riding out. <laughs> yeah, we got some people we got to uh, shout out this week. K.R. Ducky and Zinn. We also got to give uh, the Sildat a bit of a thanks. Uh, he decided that he's going to inflict pedal crash on the three of us. I got one. Ben yep. got one. I believe yeah. we were all inflicted with pedals, but to K.R. Ducky, a new patron, <laughs> along with Zinn, also a new patron, causes Pedro to inform us about a new fact of each. Yes. <laughs> uh, see, uh, Zin spelled backward is Nis, and <laughs> Kr Ducky. Uh, he was but actually very backwards. active. Uh, <laughs> You're going to unlock the he gates of hell again. <laughs> he could rock. <laughs> but yeah, no, Kr Ducky was, <laughs> was uh, very active on Wednesday. Uh, I do remember uh, seeing his name uh, show up on Discord quite a lot. Uh, their name, sorry. Shouldn't be making assumptions here. So, um, yeah, no, thank you, KR Ducky. Thank you very much, Zin. And uh, thank you, the Sildat, for uh, Pedal Crash. That that Indeed. will be interesting. Indeed. Uh, we got, got, we got a time. score I got as well. <laughs> no, I didn't. Uh. <laughs> Kung Fu! You are a Kung Fu. Um, but yeah, we got a store, store.linuxgamecast.com. Go there, buy us some LGC merch. We got t-shirts, we got stickers, we got masks, we got coffee cups, we got hoodies. It's all over at linuxgamecast.com. Just hover over the support button. We got Patreon, we got the merch, we got the PayPals, we got digital Bitcoin and uh, wish list. Most importantly, yeah. we got one for the studio, we got one for Jordan, we got one for Pedro, and one for Jill. Fair warning. Yes. <laughs> Unless you otherwise note in big bold letters, if you pick up anything from the studio, you will end up on this wall back here called a fine upstanding cannibals. That's a threat, not a promise. Are we good? Did we do the shilling? Yeah, we have successfully shilled. Uh, now we need well, to shill for another company that's not paying us. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I don't think we'll ever be in da danger of this unless Jensen's just like, you know what? Fuck you. Here's some money. <laughs> yeah, he, 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 he hit the whiskey a little hard last night, made a couple phone calls he regrets later. Him or the jacket? <laughs> Both. No. You thought I wasn't listening. I was. <laughs> so this has kind of been floating around as a rumor for a while, but it sounded ridiculous enough. I'm like, yeah, that sounds like some bullshit NVIDIA would do. I'm talking about the GeForce, the new card, the 2060. Oh! <gasps> yep. I'm not making this up. This is the 12 gigabyte 2060. <laughs> I don't even know what to say to this, but here's what I will say. Um, at the ass end of 2021, they're going to slap 12 gigs on it and resell it. And here's my take from this. My hot take is I think this is what NVIDIA expects, whatever the mid range Intel GPU to come out with something in that area. Cause I firmly believe this is made to compete with that product. Um, 
I got to say this as somebody who has a 2060, the six gig version, would I be willing to give up CUDA and NVN code for like whatever Intel comes up with? Because if this performance pager is going to tell you more about the performance and what it's going to compare to, this is going to be price and availability with me because I'm very much looking for something faster, stronger, and better than my existing 2060. While gaming does play into that equation, for me, it is uh, compute performance is what I'm focused on because this is in the studio box and that's what it does primarily. But I'd like something that can play some games. You know, apparently uh, Princess Stone here enjoys 1080p60. <laughs> yeah. Which Jordan is like, pshaw, 45, all the human eye can see. <laughs> Well, if, if you're if you're a cyber human, Canadian, I guess, man. <laughs> what are your thoughts, Pedro? How, is this going to be at least be as fast as uh, an old twenty seventy? Uh no. Uh, uh-huh. From the specs on the table, look, the, these are the official specs that Nvidia released. Uh, it seems to be uh, more in line with the twenty sixty. But when it comes to like the memory side of things, it has the same memory speed and the same memory bandwidth as the 2060, the regular 2060, not the super. So yeah, you're going to be very much uh, in between the 2060 super and the 2060, the old one. Um, But we're getting a bump in the the CUDA cores. I mean, it's a rounding error, but yes, I I mean, it's, it is, that's the same amount. Yeah. It's the same amount of CUDA cores as the 2060 super. So yeah, the 2060 super very much performed similar to a 1080. (laughs) Uh, so it's going to be that but with four extra gigabytes of vram and a five watt higher tdp that's the thing that kind of bugged me (laughs) the the tdp on the uh 2060 super is 175 and on the regular 2060 was 160 but on the new uh 12 gigabytes 2060 it's 185 it's that light hash rate they they gotta they gotta <laughs> increase the power consumption to make it less attractive to crypto miners. Oh, it's already hashing on the side, so you, you're always using up those extra hey man, ten to they can, twenty five. They can be used for multiple purposes. <laughs> I mean, this is, this is like everything else. Man, it might as well not exist. This thing is as real as whatever Intel is allegedly going to release. Because unless they can make more than seven of them and keep mm-hmm. them in stock, keep keep them under five hundred dollars, please. <gasps> Well, they do make this point. Okay, what are your thoughts on this, Jordan? Because I bought the... I casually... Let me tell you about the old times. I just casually the got up days. the day of release for the 2060. Went to NVIDIA.com. Like, eh, oh, look, that, that's out today. Okay, 349 Then they charged me shipping on top of that. That was it. That's how we used to buy video cards back in the day. Day of release. Um, you, would, you could go to a store and just... Walk away with one. No, I mean, if I was feeling fancy, yes. Uh, but I wanted that Founders Edition. So uh, this, and that was 349 for the 2060. Is is this going to be for the Intel competition? Or is this going to be like, reason, is it going to be under 300 bucks is what I'm getting at, Jordan. I mean, yeah, we, we were talking about a little bit about this in the pre-pre super shows. And, but yeah, like MSRP is one thing, but given the demand for the GPUs, like availability is the chief determinator. Uh, determiner of price at this point so like and we're 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 already seeing bots like clear out uh online retailers any sort of brick and mortar retailers have shady back channel deals that they make with the night manager like (laughs) i don't i don't know what the availability is going to be and i genuinely don't think it's going to be any cheaper than anything you can get currently maybe the advantage here is you might be able to get it period How do you think they're going to play ball with this? Because Jensen does not like to lose. Intel does not like to lose. Would it be above and beyond NVIDIA to have been sitting and stockpiling these things for the past year just so they could put out? Because that's my strat for Intel. We were talking about fabs. Who was uh, fabbing? Not Samsung, but TSMC. TSMC, yeah. So they're dealing with that. Nobody's fabbing their own uh, silicon for these things. Is it just going to be this war? Because I see that is the strategy for intel i feel like a sports commentator i want to start drawing circles and shit back here um, john madden here right? talk to you about gpus uh, an intel strategy a very valid strategy is to flood the market to the point to where there's no profit incentive for scalping or miners there's, there's too many to be bought which gets you that market share 
period, because, you know, it was like, oh, I'll buy all the pallets. I'm like, good, we got six more right here. You want to buy them? Like, I'm out of money now. Um, so, like, we, <laughs> yeah. you, you, you say that, but the amount of capital that a lot of these farms are putting up to clear out anywhere of GPUs wouldn't surprise me as even even if the availability was, like, better, Can I give that you a they would not be gone. Sure. They're dealing with an unknown quantity with the Intel stuff. They don't I know spo- what the mining performance is. I suppose so, but <laughs> unless you, you, Intel's you, out there, like, hey man, we want to give out some samples to all the mining farms. <laughs> uh, I don't may, think may, it matters maybe. because uh, they are just going to buy an entire pallet, test one. If it does poorly, then they're going to scalp it on eBay. Or are they going to be able to scalp it if Intel's like that? That's one pallet. We got a thousand more every day. So good luck scalping. They're gonna it. try. <laughs> yeah. Whether or not they're going to be able to, they're gonna try. <laughs> they, they, they certainly have a lot more money than cents. So anything's possible. Yes. So I will say if I'm if this thing is here's the truth of it. Depending on availability, if they manage to make this a sub three hundred dollar card, I might upgrade to it, but I don't consider that an upgrade. It is just going to allow me to do stuff at UHD is going to allow me to play Cybertruck without it yeah. running out of the six gigs, but I'm not going to be happy. Yes. In what I said in the show notes, I will buy the Intel card out of fuck, bother and spite if it's available. So there we go. Good. Same story. Bad times. Everyone speaking of Cybertruck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. As uh, the people behind uh, originally the uh, cyberpunks and the witchers and whatnot are now joining uh, forces with their storefront GOG because well uh, apparently according to um, the news plus article here the after a year of losses where uh, GOG was down what was it 2.2 million uh, they were in the red for 2.2 million for last year which is bad Everything, everything considered, everyone was home. A lot of people wanted to play video games and you'd think with everyone wanting a GOG version of a video game that the store would be doing better. It is not. So yes, they're deciding to join forces and refocus and probably fire a bunch of people and uh, focus on what GOG used to GOG about. And uh, it's kind of... I can see it. It's kind of hard to see the advantages of GOG when they were just trying to compete with Steam instead of doing what everyone actually wanted them to do, which was to get older games to work on newer versions of Windows, because that usually made it so that uh, you could run them easily and whine. Uh, And yeah, the people will throw around the, oh, it's DRM free. GOG is amazing because it's DRM free. Yeah, there's already a bunch of games on GOG with multiplayer versions that are tied to the Galaxy client that you can't play multiplayer at all unless you're running Galaxy. So that argument goes out the window. (laughs) Yeah, I I mean, uh, it's good that they're, at least they're, they're recognizing that they can't compete with Steam on Steam's level. And they gotta they gotta wheel things back. Also, apparently they're cutting funding from uh, their trading card game uh, mm-hmm. their section as well. Gwent isn't doing as well as they would have hoped because <laughs> they tried know, the Hearthstone Gwent so bad and they failed. They, I, I mean, I mean, d- d- despite the fact that Blizzard is Activision is still a gigantic piece of shit, uh, Hearthstone oh, is still doing are. pretty well. Uh, and if you're not, if you're a little, if uh, that's a little too baby mode for you, MTG Arena exists. And that game yes. has been tested for <laughs> go back to the years. OG. <laughs> yeah, you might, so, you might as well. To kind of throw this down, <laughs> what those two were talking about is basically what GOG wants you to take away from this. And they're like, hey, man, we're restructuring. We're getting back to our roots. But they're really fucking doing the only thing they're really doing is they're lancing off the Gwent Consortium because that was hurting the fucking bottom line. This is a bunch of words around this one thing that will once again return GOG to profitability. This was sucking it down. So... Yeah, that's kind of the story. I mean, a bunch of feel-good shit that nothing's going to change. Same story as always, but we're getting rid of this bullshit Gwent thing. Our bad. For our yep. pocketbook. It, it, it's, it's, yeah. it's Gog's artifact. It, quite, quite literally, yeah. <laughs> they, 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 they tried and failed. It's like artifact. <sighs> okay, so, you've played, we've all played Witcher, I think. Pedro, have you ever played Witcher? 
Yeah. I played through the first Witcher. Witcher 2, I got uh, angry at one point halfway through the game. It was getting a bit annoying. And then uh, there was the whole um, virtual programming thing where I got a refund from Steam before so refunds were a yes. thing. <laughs> I know, but the it's, it's Pedro, man. There's... <laughs> yeah, the, 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 the answer to this question is yes. I've never played a game of Gwent outside of like the tutorial thing in Witcher 3 that makes you the only card game I think I ever right. played in like any RPG was Pazak and Kotor, mm. and that that was it. I, don't mean I, like, I, I was never into like Triple Triad or any of that stuff. I'm not against card I like games. Triple Triad in Final that, Fantasy VIII. Yeah. I, I don't need gameception. I'm kind of against games within games, man. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> hey, un, un, unless it's Pony Island. Uh, always that. <laughs> hey, maybe we could stream some Pony Island. Maybe we could. Maybe we could do it for the memes. Yeah. So meme distros. You can stream meme, meme distros, distros for. Yeah, I'm. I'm Fuck all yeah. about the meme distros. So I have you. You may have heard about this Linus guy, a di- different Linus, who um, has been having some trouble uh, getting his live streaming shit running under Linux after using it for only two days. But yeah, uh, so the Fedora project um, has decided that they want to start addressing some of these issues. So they create, they've created this new special interest group. It's called the live streaming compatibility initiative. And what they're hoping to do is enumerate a lot of common pain points, um, come up with workarounds for them, identify commonly used pieces of hardware, software, uh, try to get them functioning under Linux, try to find alternatives to things that already exist. There's a full on list of them. Uh, they raised a VAPI issue that apparently got fixed in FFmpeg, but there might still be a Mesa component to it. Uh, they're talking about how to interface with like NVENC and um, AMD. Yeah, you're shit out of luck. You're stuck using uh, VAPI because AMF or the graphics video, whatever GCV or whatever that AMD supports, that's their equivalent of uh, NVENC is not exposed uh, except in the proprietary drivers, which no one is using because they are a poo poo. Um, but the the one I think the one advantage here is Fedora with the backing of Red Hat, IBM, whatever you want to call it, um, does have a lot of uh, open communication channels with hardware vendors, and that's going to be a good way to get stuff like uh, Elgato or um, some of the other more bespoke pieces of software that are currently only available on Linux to have some level of compatibility or under Windows to have some level of compatibility with uh, Linux. Well, ben, ben has some issues with the list though. I did. Uh- <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, I gotta give them credit. They somebody watched the show on Wednesday, <laughs> where you know Jill and Pedro were trying to tag team. I'm like, "Where's DaVinci Resolve? That is the premier video editor on Linux." And it was like open source. I'm like, "Well, they need to say this is a Fedora and open source only because nah," which they didn't. Now <laughs> it's good to see DaVinci Resolve is at least on the list. I'm going to say good work for that, and I like the idea of having you know a distribution or whatever reaching out to companies in a uh, official capacity. That's good to see. It is. Now I'll say it again because I said it Wednesday. Go ahead and list all devices and software with official Linux support. If companies are already going out of their way, and a lot of these companies officially support Red Hat on top of everything else, give them a mention. You know, and again, I'm talking like the major balls. I'm talking about the Black Magics, uh, Audio Sciences, uh, all the other brands, uh, yeah, be like, hey, all this is compatible. And if you're wondering, you're like, hmm, how would we ever find out what's compatible and not with Linux? Might I suggest a site I stumbled across? It's called Linux Gamecast. And under a hardware thing, you know, like EVGAs, XR1 Lite, that works under Linux, the Black Magic stuff, the Magewell, how to set your Stream Deck up with a great open source project called BitFocus Companion, and all the other stuff that you might be curious about. But you might want to, you know, Use OBS. There's guides. How do I set up OBS for the first time with an audio interface, a webcam? And I try to make these as distro agnostic as possible. Setting up a virtual webcam. How about HDMI audio capture with webcams and all the other? Look at that. DaVinci Resolve stuff. It's all there. Take a peek at it if you get a chance. But here's something. They've updated since our Wednesday show. Mm -hmm. Um, And I quote, after some feedback, it is clear we need to define the use cases here. With, uh, while there are, of course, some overlap, over, wait, some course is some overlap in the requirements to do news and interview shows are not the same as the requirements if you primarily are a game streamer. You're correct, but probably not like how you think. They're higher for the games. Well, what I was trying to get at on Wednesday's show is 
it doesn't matter if you're doing like a new stream or anything like what we're doing or a game stream. A shit stream's a shit stream at the end of the day. So, yeah, but Jordan, do you think you might be able to log in and give him some pointers since you use <laughs> Fedora? You've worked with the Fedora project in the past. I I have. Yeah, I was, I was actually thinking of uh, doing that when I have a couple minutes free to condense your notes into uh, something a little more wiki friendly for these guys, because yeah, like you put out a shit ton of resources about this um, and definitely people should be looking into them because they are fairly beginner friendly. So yeah. And the the thing that I brought up on uh, Wednesday that they still haven't listened, it's uh, the capture cards. Why are you listing the $500 one when that, $60 $60 one that Ven has, and it is on the next game cast. Oh, I, I feel search that. for capture cards. What, what, what was that site again? <laughs> I, I forget already. <laughs> yeah. Linux uh, game Never heard for, of it. Oh, okay. dot org, right. I think. Okay. <laughs> well, Hey, Hey, not, to yeah, be, no, not you're to be... listing the $500 one. Well, Why? screw you, Pedro. I listed a thousand dollar one. Look at that. That's a major 1100 pro. So yeah, with your, <laughs> no, but the, the, the XR one is right there at the top. That's the first one. Okay. Well, well the one next to it's $500. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the first one is just a PCI version, PCIe version of the USB version that they're listing. So <laughs> no, the fuck it's not baby. No, it isn't. It's not even a little bit. <laughs> There's uh, it, 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 it doesn't four just have more, a blue tab. Uh, three more ports. <laughs> <sighs> it's a completely different chipset. But Pedro, tell me more about this fantasy line. Fantasy land. <laughs> well, it, you can make it look like a fantasy land because uh, it was one of the things that uh, Goverlay added a while back was a teeny tiny little sync button that allows you to download. Um, all of the reshade, uh, it just downloads the index, which then you can activate and it actually sets everything up for you. So what the fuck's it? Goverlay? Really awesome. Is that like a Sesame Street character? That's Groverlay. Nope. <laughs> That's, Grover that would be Grover, like yes. <laughs> the Goverlay is a teeny tiny little application that lets you manage overlays. Stuff like VK Basalt or Mango HUD. Uh, and you can just have a screen? very... Yes. What about you Uplay? Have a GUI. Can it manage your you play? Not that I'm aware of, no. <laughs> Does it hook into Ubisoft uh, this, Connect? This is for um other open source overlays like Mango HUD and VK Basalt. Uh, the uh yeah, the new version, version not point seven is out. It has a tab UI optimized for the Steam Deck this, resolution. They need, re- <laughs> they need to get some marketing. It should say Goverlay cubes and shit <laughs> the cube are just that's just an example so you can see what uh, mango has gonna look like by the time you're done and uh it does replay sorcery as well which you can already do with other things like obs the uh no the the thing that i really really like is that sync button that basically gives you the entire index of all the custom shaders from Re- from project reshade and then you can just enable the ones you really like, and then you start a game while passing that information over to um, VK Basalt, and you have a very good looking game. Very, very good looking. And of course, it also does the contrast adaptive sharpening, like your FSRs and whatnot. Do keep in mind, this particular version of Goverlay.7, you're going to need libqt pascal, which was not a requirement previously, but it is now. <laughs> My favorite part Listen, of uh, soon as they're done installing this font, I'll take a look. No, <laughs> you'll you'll uninstall GNOME, then don't do it. Shut up, me uh, distro. <laughs> <laughs> now, my favorite feature about Goverlay version 0.7 is the fact that you can now stick Mango HUD right smack dab in the middle Fuck of your yeah. screen. So when you're live streaming your shit, you can be like, look at all my burps, motherfucker. <laughs> it's, you could already do that. <laughs> not, not with, not with, well, with Mango HUD regularly. Uh, Goverlay, yes. <laughs> but now you can click your way through it. Now you can click your way through it and be yes, like, look at you my can burps, gooey your way to it. <laughs> You know what, Goverlay? Put some next buttons in there. And make them feel at home. Yeah, a back button. <laughs> There's a does save nothing. button. It, it doesn't have to do. Button. It doesn't have to do anything. It just put an X button on there so you can click on it. Get the feels like. Ah, oh, yeah. No, no. It's more. No, like we, 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 just, we, we just need more arbitrary <laughs> progress bars. Just Fuck pop yeah. them up. Yeah, wherever. So uh, this leads me to believe that there's a non-opinionated um, template. 
I mean, yeah, it's just called an empty Git repo. Uh, this is a Godot <laughs> game template. Uh, it's an opinion, as Ben said, it's an opinionated template for Godot 3.4. What that really means is that it's a handy dandy boilerplate for your Godot project. If you're looking to get started on a new thing, uh, it has a bunch of canned GitHub actions to uh, push your builds out to itch. It does uh, continuous integration, so you can push get builds as soon as you commit, which is really, really nice. It also has... Um, some basic support for scene switching in development mode and a pause button feature. So you can implement, you don't have to worry about that. A couple games on uh, GitHub are actually using this as their base. And again, it's very bare bones, but it's... Karato! Potato Domo, <laughs> no! Right. <laughs> Karato no gas. Yeah, no, no, no Potato Domo, don't do it. Um, but yeah. Uh, so there, there you go. If you're looking to start a new project in Godot, you don't want to set up a bunch of uh, boilerplate stuff, or maybe you just need something to get started so you can start playing around with scenes. This is for you. It's handy dandy. Go check it out via Git. Yeah. It's thing. I wanted to give it a mention. I thought it was kind of neat. Now, maybe, just maybe, Godot's not your thing. Maybe. But you, you still, you still crave, you still crave that pure open sourciness, you know, none, none of the, uh, Unity, none of the uh, epic uh, Unreal Engine, because you know it's like, oh, we got to start paying them money after a minute. <laughs> Unreal Engine's a little too lightweight for me. I want something maybe, heavier. Maybe you <laughs> want your three D engine to crush pixels. I want to make my own crisis. Damn it! The Open Three D Foundation has announced the first major release of Open Three D Engine. So yeah, clever naming. Odi O three D E. We've talked about this a while back. This, this is the bastard stepchild of the uh, lumberyard thing. So it's it's Crytek with most of the numbers filed off, but it's completely open source and there's no gotchas in it anywhere. And I am very happy to see a truly open source AAA game engine on Linux. Granted, nobody would have ever guessed it would have been based on Crytek ever. But it does come in, you can download it right now, which I tried to do. There's nightly builds and there's the official stable build. Both of which Debian 11 told me to get wrecked trying to launch because uh, it needs Clang 12 and Curl 4. I'm like, you know what? I'm not dicking with that. But yeah, if, you, if you're looking to play around with it, I think this could get some traction because there's no like catches after a certain amount or like restrictive. I mean, this is legitimately just open source. I look forward to somebody going, no, you don't you mean source available? Fuck no, I don't. No, uh, yeah. Amazon really, really tried to do something with this, this engine and decided hard, yeah, they, just, they, they can't. And so they foisted it onto the Linux Foundation. But yeah, I'm happy to see that Open Crytek, aka Libre Lumberyard, gets its first point release. And it comes with a handy dandy Linux version of the editor. That's a big one that a lot of uh, a lot of uh, engines don't really provide. They provide the ability right. to export to Linux, well, like but no way to one. actually develop. <laughs> um, this one so, yeah, does uh, export to Linux. This one does export to yes. Linux as well, uh, and so uh, I look again. I had to refresh my memory. Like, what the what the fuck games are actually using Lumberyard? And lo and behold, you can officially make your own Star Citizen with blackjack and hookers. Mm -hmm. And I wonder, I wonder if someone starts right now, will they finish before Star Citizen proper gets released? Mm. Come on, it that's depends. Not fair. Are they going to run their own uh, crowdfunding campaign, and then are they let's going to keep running the crowdfunding uh, campaign listen, after the original game is already I, over? I just want to know if they can catch up. If, if with the exact same tool chain, can they catch up? Can they do it fast? <laughs> I think it's kind of interesting. I like that this is there, and yeah, just clone it, play with it, do what you're going to do, and uh, and make sure you're running Debian testing. Yeah, Debian yeah. 11. Yeah, the, 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 they, they, I'd love to see uh, a game build with this. Just show me what it looks like. Give me the we, we, pump we've, action we've captain. <laughs> it's it's <laughs> called Snow. You remember that? It ran at 720p. Oh, oh right. Hard yeah. nopes yeah. your system. Yeah. 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 So uh, maybe maybe <laughs> someone can bad. do a little better. And you can look at it like that. this. I mean, I, I think everyone would agree. Um, Unreal Engine 4 has a Linux editor despite Epic's best efforts. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. You can thank the community for that one. Epic, hundred percent. No, nothing to do. Hundred yeah. percent. All right. <laughs> so coming up next, we gotta we gotta stop talking about Linux games because now it's time to talk about DOS games. <laughs> Welcome back to the G Acquisition. We're here to take your game, run it on a bunch of different Linux distributions, Pretty put a good. bunch of different hardware behind it, and tell you what we think based on our. Super scientific lawn chair metric. Uh, this week we're taking a look at Monster Bash 8D by Amberheart Games, done on the Unity engine. You can pick it up for about 10 bucks US. 
What is it? A Poogie's Bash em and Smash em adventure plunges Don- Johnny Dash into the evil underworld of Count Chuckula. It's Count Chuck, whatever. When his dog Tex is kidnapped by Count Chuck, along with hundreds of other dogs and cats. We got to thank Stride PR for sending us some keys for this. And yeah, I guess we're, I guess we were just going down the line. So uh, you know what? Ben, I'll let Pedro go first this week. All right. Okay. Okay. Very gracious. Uh, well. Over here on uh, KDE Neon with the Ryzen 7 3700X and the GTX 1080. <laughs> Bit of an overkill, but yeah, it holds, uh, it launches out of the box and it holds 144 at 2560 by 1440. Yeah, that's really Are you important. Trying to for kick the that ass. Don't beat <laughs> the. Um, the sounds, they're amazing. I do love the sounds. Uh, the sounds, when you kill one of the floating skulls, one of those that you see on screen right now, uh, they make a really awesome dying sound, and I like that. The graphics are as you remember them, but they now support 69 resolutions and higher refresh rates, so that's good. Now, I do have to ask, what's wrong with your face? I mean, your controller layout. Left on the D-pad is down on the menu. And right is up, and which means you're effectively forced to platform with the analog stick, which in a game when you're just moving in effectively like eight directions, you really want that D-pad. But no, nope, you got to use the analog stick for that. Uh, the <laughs> Do you really want a new generation of people to hate your game? Honestly, I'd recommend playing with the keyboard because that's clearly what this was made for and the HD remaster doesn't seem to have the technical chops to change that. Is it fun? Well, it's an Apogee platformer. And you make the dude skinnier and give him a pogo stick and you have keen dreams. Johnny Dash there is already wearing the pajamas, so away you go. Unlike the keen games, however, which had a uh, very, very good overworld exploration and actively rewarded you for doing said exploration, this is your traditional action platformer, which means you either have to finish a level uh, for the part-time or you 100% everything. There's still plenty to explore in each level. Uh, Each level is actually very, very big, but this is exactly the kind of game which I played non-stop back in the 90s, not this one specifically, but I played most of the Keen games. I played Keen 1, 3, and 4. I played Crystal Caves. I played Secret Agent. And these are just the ones from Apogee. The... Apogee. (laughs) Apogee, whatever. Uh, There were so, so many others that, that I played because this was the genre at the time. But yeah, the... It's this one, uh, Monster Bash, is just more of that. And I'm still not at a point where I enjoy this specific genre yet. So, uh, two chairs for me. It's perfectly agreeable. It's just not great. (laughs) Okay, well, on Fedora 35, 64-bit with the R9-3900X and the GTX 1080 Ti. My god, everything works. It's a Unity port of a fucking DOS game, you guys. Come on. Like Pedro said, the controller layout is jacked, but I would rather platform with the controller. Thank you very much. Uh, Fun-wise, uh, I never played any of the Apoogie platformers as a kid, so I got zero nostalgia for any of this. It's not awful. I think definitely like most games of the time, uh, it, it, it's definitely like most of the games of that era, but in 2021, almost 2022 now, because it's the end of December, or close to the end of December, uh, it means that the game definitely shows us age. Gameplay-wise, I'm really reminded of Michael Jackson's Moonwalker, minus the whole turning into a robot and murdering people, and then getting into a TIE fighter thing. Uh, run around, save the puppies and the kitties, get to the exit. And, you know, I can't blame it for being faithful to the original. Uh, I maybe would have liked it better if they modernized the game, add some more like, uh, features, but this is just a straight up remaster. It's a faithful one. I'll give it two chairs because it is what it says on the tin. It's not pretending to be anything else. I just wish it was a little more. Okay. What you've been waiting for? How does it perform on a thread ripper? Well, let's take a look. Um, you know, this is unity in, in 2021. That means it's probably going to work out of the box. And it does full screen windowed. Now, it is maxed out at 1600p, which I thought was kind of curious, but outside of that, it really didn't run into any issues. Controller picked up as well. Xbox One X controller, no problems. Having the PC speaker sound effect, having that mode, 
That was a nice touch. I enjoyed that. It's like, does this really do it? It's like, oh, I remember those days. I remember those days when sound cards were luxury items. Now, we're going to talk about fun. So uh, the, the original game was like 13 megabytes. So what does the additional 125 megabytes of the remake get you? It gives you a stark reminder of how absolute shit PC platforming was in 1993. That's what it does. This released around the same time as games like Duke Nukem 2, Biomenace, and Electroman. All terribly terribad. Seriously, this, this is why we had consoles back in the day. This is Monster Bash with like a mild graphics bump, so it's not going to like really piss off anyone aesthetic-wise, but that's about it. No quality of life improvements, as Jordan was saying, for 2021. That's kind of kind of a must when you compare it with something like Wonder Boy, the Dragon Strap. You might oh, understand. where you could switch. Yeah, like the- complete remit, you know, not, real upgrade. Now you might understand why I'm a little let down by this. Uh, you know, it does have some user levels, which might be a nice touch, but I couldn't figure out how to access them. Good luck if you want to try that out. And I don't understand why, as a game, Monster Bash H exist but it does so my suggestion play the original in your browser shut up singular tier for those of us who lived through the dark times of platforming on pc back in the day but you know it is functional it is kind of priced to sell it's reasonably cheap uh no serious complaints around 9.99 but you know to the thing you got to think about it, like compared to something like Wonder Boy, which was a full remake. Now, granted, that game's like fourteen dollars, but or like the Double Fine stuff. You know, it's been updated for modern systems. Jordan, wouldn't you like kind of rather see maybe like tighter controls, better integration? I mean, it's got achievements and shit. Yeah, I mean, I mean, like the the con- the controls are fine, but like I don't, I don't know, maybe maybe some better animation, maybe just like treat it like a modern game and just sort of try to port the levels over. I, I, again, it's it's like that lazy remaster thing. Not to not to not to whatever the the makers of this game, but like it it does it doesn't do much. And if you've already played this game, it's not gonna it's not really gonna blow your mind. It's not gonna blow your mind if you haven't played this game either, because you've probably played better platformers that have learned from this game's mistakes. Mm-hmm. And I kind of wish that this remake learned from its own. So, all right, well. We bounce out of here. Uh, that's gonna do it for the Cherquisition. Coming up next, hate mail, not one piece. Yeah, but two. It didn't crash, but hey, wouldn't you know it? You made it now to the crashed. end. You, so you probably didn't crash either, unless you're watching this while driving. Please don't listen to us while driving. Yes. Uh, but don't don't watch it. I don't know if that's any <laughs> better. Really, than, I mean, you might. Just get... <laughs> you really don't need to be watching. No, it's okay. <laughs> you, you, did you turn into Kermit the Frog for a second? <laughs> Momentarily, yes. <laughs> it's not easy being Pedro. <laughs> but yeah, no. If you'd like to tell me uh, about my uh, momentary Kermit the Frog um, moment, uh, <laughs> that was a weird sentence. You can go to linuxgamecast.com and hit the contact button. There's a form you gotta fill to send us some hate mail for this show. Make sure you pick LGC Weekly as the show that you're sending your hate mail to. Otherwise, we may be misinclined to interpret that as some constructive feedback for that Wednesday show where Jill is. Frogman burn him. Oh yeah, Crazy Frog is coming back. That's a bit of random trivia. (laughs) 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 So ladies and gentlemen, up first, uh, I kind of alluded to it. The uh, developers reached out and touched us um, about, what was the name of the game? Rob Richards. Uh, uh, Yes. And (laughs) here's your reward because you followed instructions. Uh, We're reaching out behalf of a glide company. Mega, it's all so close to Mega Corp. I really want to uh, Me- Mega Poop. It's Sokoban style oh. puzzle game. Not long <laughs> after they decided to make the game compatible with Linux too, they have a few Linux enthusiasts on the team as well. So um, very nice. <laughs> yeah, but this was pretty nice. I focused on game podcast. Thought you might be interested in trying it out. So uh, we're reaching out to you, send, sending us three keys. Ooh, very nice. Very to play. We hope you enjoy nice. the game. So there's your extra <laughs> bonus plug, Luca, because. You've proven that you can read. And I I say that as thank you, because so often this is not the case. 
It's a very low bar to clear. Dude. It really is. <laughs> Man. It's, it, the requirement is, okay, you're going to send us keys? Cool. Send us three, please. Nope. And uh, PR people for Rob Riches. Very good job. Well done. Very good job. Indeed. Well done. Thank you. Now, on to our little bit of hate mail for this week. Um, evil, evil Valve, because we all know Valve is uh, nothing but a soulless, money-grubbing evil. corporation, which we called a soulless, money-grubbing corporation. But we did bring up last week, 484, go back and watch that, uh, that they, they haven't really done anything evil yet, right? I, I mean the the, the evil the evil so. stuff they're doing is uh, revenue related. Uh, you're gonna, I'm you're gonna, gonna spin I, That's three so far. D- dish related <laughs> edits I have to make this week. I can take this one, but yes. Right. Uh, on episode four eight four, you mentioned Valve being an evil company that hasn't really shown its evil side yet. They've done something pretty evil though. They normalized DRM through Steam. I'm not saying we should go out and abandon them or that all games on Steam use DRM, just that they did something that falls into the evil category. Now, um, most of the games on Steam don't actually have DRM. Uh, I guess what Spurk here means is that Valve normalized the needing to have a client running uh, to launch the games, because yes, there are quite a few games that even if they don't have any kind of really draconian DRM, the likes of Denuvo, um, they they take advantage they of the will, Steam runtime. Yes, they do still require the Steam client to be running, and they'll if you try to run them, they'll go, "Oh, you need to have Steam running so we can use the Steamworks uh, functionality that we've built into our game." Some people call that DRM, and if you want to do that, sure. But like I mentioned well, earlier, let's be in the honest, show, Pedro. If that's the argument, <laughs> you got them on the ropes. <laughs> and, uh, well, that's the thing. If this is DRM, if just having that requirement for the client is DRM, then I'm sorry, but there's quite a few games on GOG that have DRM because they require the Galaxy client to be running if you want to play them online. There, there, there's a there's a big nuanced discussion to be had here about like hard DRM versus soft DRM. Valve clearly <laughs> sides towards like the soft DRM uh, side of the argument because uh, you know they they do support it. Do you think they it would be fair DRM. to say Valve kind of leans towards the indifferent? It's up to you, bro. A yeah. little bit. Well, I mean, it's Steam very has come out as a solution to the piracy <laughs> problem by saying, "Yo, we're going to try and make the service." as um as convenient as possible to reduce the re- reduce the advantages of software piracy but if you want to if you want to get show some ire towards people uh promoting DRM you might want to turn that towards the W3C cuz they basically allowed um vast majority of entertainment companies to roll in say you must implement encrypted media extensions that probably will in a couple of years tie into TPM 2.0 which that will be fun if you want to watch Netflix on anything other than Windows yeah. 11. Mm. <laughs> you get what Amazon's doing right now with Prime Video on Linux. You get uh, 480p. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's not even 720. It's it's like 480 because that's what, really Watching your Prime Video on Amazon is just go watch it on a mobile device. Same, same experience. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I see your point. I mean, if you want like 100% no, like normalized, like the soon, as soon as you start getting on the DRM train, you're getting awfully close to like the open source train as well. I, I, see, I, I, I disagree with that. I think that D- DRM plays a role. There, 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 is, there is an argument. I wouldn't say it's necessarily a good argument, but there is an argument in favor of it. It's the implementation therein. It's like, it's like a uh, blockchain, right? Like there's a good idea in there, but implementation is poo poo. Because See, they okay, took the no, I do want to address what Strader said because Pedro wasn't the one who said it. It was Jordan, but he brought up the. Uh, we're talking about online functionality of the games. Uh, that was yeah. I mentioned that. You yeah, mentioned I mentioned it, that. But... And uh, you want an example? Okay, um, the space exploration No Man's Sky. If you get the GOG version of that game, the only way that you're getting any online functionality is via the Galaxy client. I know there's more. I can't remember any more off the top of my head, but that's the one that I think Shadow Warrior Two of. as well, because I had to I had to buy that game because we got it for free off GOG. Oh, here's right. the, well, here, yeah. Here's an easier one, Shank Two. <laughs> mm. Yeah. I, so I, I yeah, mean, there's there's games that require the Galaxy client for the online functionality. There's games that require Steam for their online functionality. 
So does that count as DRM nowadays, does it? If I'm trying to win the argument, yes. <laughs> then, sorry, but uh, GOG games are not DRM-free. Not all of them, anyway. Mm. <laughs> Well, you know, this was like, uh, and it's like, wherever you want to draw the line, because this is one of the things I was really hoping that they were not going to come back as a retort with the meme distro streaming wiki. I was like, no, we only want to cover open source hardware and software solutions because Pedro was hit me. He was like, but, you know, DaVinci Resolve is not open source. And I'm like, but yeah, but you can't be willfully <laughs> ignorant of it existing if you're trying to do a legitimate guide. I, th- I think Fedora in, the, in that mm-hmm. case is definitely trying to play a bit of have their cake and eat it too, where they're saying like, we will make it easy to support this, but we're not going to provide internally a in, uh, method of installation, oh, right. which I think, I mean, which I think is like a decent compromise. Like, I think they should definitely have a guide for like the, cause there's more than one steps you need to do to get your Fedora box uh, up to the point where you can play the games and stream because it's not an out of the box experience. As I meant to ask you, uh, if, if you're on NVIDIA, if you're, if you're on, on AMD, AMD, if you're on, if you're on AMD, you're good to go. What about like so it does ship with an FFmpeg with NVIDIA code <laughs> for 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 AMD GPUs? No, 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 for NVIDIA. Yeah, that does. If you install uh, OBS Studio via RPM Fusion, it's all no. Right. I'm talking about FFmpeg with F or FM, FFmpeg. That's that's uh, that's also provided via RPM Fusion, if I recall correctly. So you yes. have to install a different thing, or is RPM yeah, Fusion third something? Third-party repo. Yeah. So this is what yeah, I'm but, asking. Is but, there anything? But, in- but they do they do tell you that they do give you an option to enable it uh, in install time now. So okay. Like I, I, again, it's we're 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 not going to stop you from doing it. We're just not going to give you the way to do it natively. Which I, I guess yeah, you is, can't is just do it like want. Ubuntu does it with a single tick box, and you have the NVIDIA drivers installed See, by think, the time you reboot into your cell. This thing. is always interesting. Or you can do it like the way Pop does it, which I think is a right way of like, hey, look, your system works when you install our operating system. Yeah, so ISO for NVIDIA and the ISO for the Intels and the AMDs. So there, just don't try to yeah. install Steam. Or you'll remove your desktops and all your phones. <laughs> I think you can now. I think they fixed that after the video came out. Hey, I was man, like, I'll oh, have you know, no, Pop no, OS is a very ever particular fixed. stance against some particular DRM implementations. It just happens. <laughs> you can't pirate if you can't desktop. Ooh, Linus, yeah. here's a video idea. <laughs> See who can pirate the game of a game quickest. From Windows. Ah, yeah. yeah. How do you like part five, the mystical part five that they keep uh, hinting to on the WAN show? Pirating software on Linux. Well, Good so, luck. so here, here, here's here's how you do that. You go into you go into like dot Steam, Steam, Steam apps, whatever. You take Monster Bash HD. You copy it to a floppy disk, and then you bring it over to uh to your windows computer and stick see now i'm wondering you're going to need a zip disk (laughs) oh hell no man i'll i'll now you gotta chunk chunk the uh chunk the zipped up file yeah i'll make my game a ttf they'll never figure it out (laughs) you won't be able to you won't be able to install it though let us figure it out let us actually went into the folder double clicked on it's like oh install (laughs) all right beautiful people hey thanks for showing up we got to roll out of here but before we do we're gonna thank you in the credits right after I bring up a little bit of music. That's going to do it for this week's Linux Gamecast Weekly. Thanks for riding the nightmare train all the way to the end. If you are a patron, as always, this will be made for available in podcast format and video format tomorrow morning. But if you want to get in touch with me, I'm just at Finstone on Twitter or we have mass.linuxgamecast.com where I'm just at Vin. I'm Jordan Svung. I am the Comic Sans MS of Linux users. You can find me as an inappropriate font on Twitter. I thought you were zapped fool. ding butts. No, I, I used to, I was web dings, but then I got upgraded. Oh, or uh, twitch.tv slash burning fool. Not the burning fool, just burning fool. And uh, considering I am the uh, Windows support person here, fine, I'll be windings. Uh, if you'd like to uh, mailbox car flag at me, um, Go to Twitter. That's at and accounted for on Twitter. That's 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 where you can find me. F O U R. And remember, kids, fonts or something. Fonts. <laughs> Kerning. <laughs> One of these days. Oh, is that a reference bang, to the thing? <laughs> straight to the third moon of Omicron Percy I eight, where our lovely Patreons live. Reference. 
Yes, always. <laughs> we got to thank our advisors, <laughs> Omegas and Arthur, and our executive producers. You know them. You love them. Al Diaz, Barb Ramp, Scott Michaud, Mr. Fox Dog, Atomic Aspect, G, Mike T, Drummer, and Kohaku, and our Chicago Kicks Ass little Nicky fans. Look at the butt. Dark Wing and Abstraction. Topical. Sea monsters yeah. like Jack yeah. Beaver, Alt L, Rider X, <laughs> Machina, Truggy, Veritanuta, Justin, Frost, Glow, and Strider. With the Death Notes, Nova, Basil, Chad, Romeo, Marson, System T, Craig, Renee, Leonardo, DeCresny, Kim, Sherwings, Mashley, G, Chris, Stephen, Jill, Bass Benjamin, Geeks, Dumb, I'm getting, I'm like Brock Wyatt, I'm getting them up at the top. We always Dirty miss them. Rohit, with his five Game dudes, Matron, Eagle, Dementor, minus nine. <laughs> Zin, Look at Zin King and Kurdaki. Five upstairs. Jim and Pebble and Carl, Oil of Hope and Mon- Monica and Alex and Linux minus Nero, nine and AJ. Aldeus, Noctilus, John, Eshep, and Game Mo Tron. Y'all are Game truly, f- truly f- wonderful. We'll see you next Trolly week. wonderful. And same font time. Trolly. <laughs> same kerning channel. That if I... Just put random spaces in between letters. Why not? Fuck up the kerning. <laughs> like, odd numbers. Five dudes.